For almost a month, I've been comparing these PV panels to this solar thermal collector to see which one will heat water better. And I'm gonna pull that data logger quick and get inside because it's 11 degrees out right now this morning and it's cold. So I wanna grab it and get in and let's compare the numbers. Here we go. Ellen, are you ready to declare the winner? Here we go. And the best. Boom. Go ahead, push it in. All right. Solar thermal wins. <laughs> but what's this? A second ribbon. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Come on, Eleanor. Push it in. Yeah. All right. Well, over here, the solar thermal, we have best in area. And on the solar PV, best in cost. So which one's more important to you? If you have very limited space, go with the solar thermal. But if you've got space, kind of like I do, then the PV is way cheaper. Now let's dive into all the numbers as why. It is just a rock to keep the the sky. <laughs> so I've had the trash bag on it. Let's see. Yep. So the top two numbers are the thermal tank, which is this guy. So it looks like right now it's kind of averaged 110 degrees. And the bottom two numbers, which look like they average 122 degrees, is that one, the electric tank. And let's see if uh, this electric one is doing anything. So if we go in here, uh, I did not have this meter on the whole time because uh, my first meter that I tried was uh, broke and didn't actually work with this voltage. Uh, so right now, even early this morning, we're making 260 watts. We'll, we'll take this guy inside and plug it in. Here's what the software looks like right when you open it up. There's 200,000 data points, so it was a mess. So first thing I did was separate this out and try to make it more uh, readable. Here's what the graph looks like once I uh, took out some of the extremes. And the two black lines are the thermal tank and the two red lines are the electric tank. Both tanks started out at 47 degrees Fahrenheit and that's the water coming in from my town. And then boom, the thermal tank really shot off right away. The first day it got really hot. The electric tank did almost nothing down here. That was my fault completely. I did not know how to wire those things up. But I figured it out quick and I made a video just about how to wire the PV panels. If you want to check that out, it'll be in the description below. But here they go. They shoot off, bang, bang, bang. Every day they're getting warm, every day they're getting cold. Over here we had a little bit of a snowstorm, another snowstorm over here. That's when the panels are getting completely covered and just not heating up at all. And now this is really interesting. Check this out. The thermal tank way outperforms the electric. And then just three days later, the electric tank outperforms the thermal. So what's going on? Well, this is one of the interesting things that affects thermal, but does not affect the PV. And that is the difference between the water temperature, which you can see on the left, and the outside air temperature. And I'll dive into that a little bit more later. So that data was way too confusing to look at in the other program. So I moved it to an Excel sheet and then I just saved the 8.45 a.m. and the 2.30 p.m. because that wound up being the absolute coldest tank temperatures and the absolute hottest tank temperatures of every day. And then I went ahead and pulled some different data as I was working my way through all this, including the average air temperatures from the NOAA website. If we go back to this graph, remember there were some days with zero production and I had screwed up that beginning. So I eliminated some of that data uh, just so that we were looking at only production days. So then I made this new graph that's even easier to understand and it's just 15 days now. Here you can see the thermal did over 18,000 BTUs on that first day and about 10,000 on the electric. The second day, the electric still did the same, 
but the thermal dropped way down. Now why is this? Well it had to do with the difference in temperature between the air temperature and the water temperature in the tank. And this is something that the thermal suffers from, but not the electric. This is important in my own life because I have noticed that I can't seem to get my 250 gallon tank in my crawl space really hot, which is what I want. Uh, and that has to do with the thermal suffering from this uh, heat loss out of it. If you're concerned with area and you have, have limited space to install panels, well, the thermal panel did about twice as good as the electric on an area basis. But if you're looking at cost, well, the electric panels, and this is all three, they retail for about $500, and the thermal panel would retail for about $900. So if you're looking at cost, well, the electric panels are about twice as efficient uh, on a cost basis. They cost half as much for the same BTUs or the same heat energy, I don't know, kilowatt hours <laughs> uh, of heat energy. So, uh, you know, I'm really surprised and happy with just how well the electric panels performed in this test. Well, thank you, Eleanor, for making such beautiful ribbons. So which system heats water best? Well, the answer is they both heat water. So it depends. What works best for you? What do you need? If you are in a situation, say, townhouses, where you have really limited space, then go ahead and... Uh, go with the solar thermal because it does crank out more BTUs per square foot. And the PV, well, it just costs a lot less. So you get twice as many BTUs per dollar. That's awesome. Uh, the other nice thing about the PV is that it will crank that temperature up higher, which is what I care about. Now, I care about getting my solar thermal tank up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you're not sure why, check out my other video. I'll leave a link to in the description below why I care about 180 degree Fahrenheit water. So the PV is the clear winner to me. Uh, but in a situation, say, for my garage, uh, on my, <laughs> but in a situation like my garage, uh, I'll probably keep the solar thermal because all I care about is low temperature water for heating my radiant floor. And the solar thermal is much better at producing that. Now this solar thermal panel is four feet by eight feet, 32 square feet, and it is a drain back system. So all the water will drain back into the 55 gallon drum when the pump shuts off. That pump is controlled with a thermostatic differential controller. So when the panel is hotter, it turns on. When the panel is colder, it turns off. Now there, with the PV, there's no controls. There's nothing to it. It's just a direct connection. It's as simple as it gets. You don't have to worry about pitching the pipes. You don't have to worry about insulating the pipes because there are no pipes. It's just a wire run. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, I, I can't believe how well this thing worked. Now, yes, it's twice as much square feet to get the two to kind of com compete with each other. <laughs> uh, now that had to do with trying to match it to the heating element. I wasn't trying to make it twice as many square feet, uh, but it's just how it worked out. But it did so well that I am seriously thinking of taking the thermal panels off my house, putting them on the garage, and getting some more PV panels to heat the solar thermal tank down in my crawl space. Go, 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 go. <laughs> on my last video, a few of you asked me to set up a Patreon account so that you can help support me for doing more of these projects. And I went ahead and did that for you guys. There's going to be a link in the description below. Uh, I'm not gonna fill up every video with advertisements for that. Uh, it's just really nice of you guys to offer. Thank you so much. Uh, because these experiments really do take a lot of time and a lot of money to pull off. So if you wanna see more of these experiments, go ahead and uh, support me on Patreon. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy the videos, like, subscribe, comment, and share. Bye-bye. Okay.